Working in a metal shop has got to be one of the most thrilling experiences an artist can have. Uh, I think it ranks up there with writing graffiti where it doesn't really matter what it looks like in the end because the fun was really in making it. I began making flowers and steel after one of my girlfriends dumped me. Uh, I installed one of these right in front of her house in Brooklyn, uh, hoping that I could ease my way back in that way. Yeah, that worked for about a night, and the next day I was still dumped. Anyway, that was 10 years ago, and now I'm married, but I still love making steel flowers, and that just starts off with ordering raw steel. In this case, I'm making a limited edition of four, so I add up how much um, steel I'm going to need, and then I go to the cold saw and begin cutting it. The next stage is cutting out the petals out of sheet steel. This is a very slow and labor-intensive process. I use a pair of tin snips, which require a lot of gripping power, and you have to, you know, go through each and every last petal, uh, you know, that you want to add onto this this flower. I'd I'd be lying to you if I told you this was the fun part. Then I turn my attention to the stem and the supporting vines. Now. This is a very rewarding process because I, I channel all of my inner Bob Ross here where you know I try to make what is lifeless, life affirming. One of the challenges of doing limited editions is trying to make each individual piece look like the next. Now, the secret here is to don't get ahead of yourself on any one particular piece. You have to do every procedure um, to the next one. Now, welding the petals is also very fun because in one instance you have, you know, just a petal and then you have the flower. And in the next instant you have something that lasts potentially thousands of years. So uh, there's nothing arduous about that. It's instant gratification. That's welding. And what's followed by welding is firing up the oxygen acetylene torch. Now, I've been working with steel for 10 years, and I still get excited when I go to the striker and strike it up and then put it to the torch, and then boom, you just have a flame, and you can now make the steel submit to your design. Once it's at this stage of heat, you can curl it up, you loop it, twist it. You know, the sky's the limit, really. So in this case here, I'm just bending back all those petals that I, that I welded together so that it looks like this flower is in full blossom and full bloom. In the final stages, I begin a very meticulous process of masking and painting the flower. Uh, I learned this technique from a painting job I once had, and at the time I thought that the work was cruel and unusual, but now I can uh, see the usefulness of it, kind of like Karate Kid before and after he understood uh, the wax on, wax off move, you know. So this involves priming and painting the base a plate of the flower. And, um, you know, the, the secret is not to get any part of uh, the paint on another component of the piece. So in this case, there's the flower and the base. So on the base, I prime it and paint it black. And on the flower itself, I clear coat it. Now, the clear coat gives it um, kind of a perpetual morning dew look, which if you look very closely in a, in a certain amount of light, you can get a very beautiful um, rainbow glimmer on the finished product. Once that is finished and gotten out of the way, all the flower has to do is exist. There's no water, no sunlight needed because this flower never dies. 